I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're taking a deep dive with a remarkable author. His name is Kobe McGee, and he has written a terrific book. It is called Treasures of Darkness. His compelling book is a beacon for those seeking answers to life's deepest questions, offering enlightenment and guidance towards peace with the past, oneself, and God. The author dives deep into humanity's default settings, uncovering hidden truths about God, rarely discussed in churches, and provides a path to confront fears, shame, and deception. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Author's Reputation Press for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing this remarkable book. The links are below this interview. Kobe, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let's start out with the title. What do you mean by Treasures of Darkness? Okay, that is a um, that is a reference to a passage of scripture in in uh, Isaiah forty five uh, verses two and three, and um, the Lord. Get, uh, when I was in my first year of college, I was seeking the Lord about my life, uh, you know, direction and everything. And one day, He, I just Isaiah forty five. I just popped into my head. And so I turned to it and verses two and three were the ones who stood out to me. And I'll, I'll just read them real quick. It's, sure. it's a really powerful passage. It says, I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I, I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. And so that was, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was a prophecy about what the Lord was about to do in my life. Uh, I had, you know, I had I'd gone through a traumatic childhood, but, but most of that trauma was buried in my subconscious. So I didn't really know, um, I, you know, I, as, as I grew older, I started having some emotional breakdowns and some mental issues. And I didn't know where they came from, but the Lord was at this point in my, in my, I think I was 18 when he gave me that. And he began to, from that moment on, he began to uncover the trauma that was, what was buried in my, in my heart, in my subconscious. And so the treasures of darkness were those through those hard times. It was those, revelations, those things that he would say to me uh, to help me along the way and to help me to deal with that trauma. And those were the treasures that he would give to me in those dark times. And so that was, and that's what the book is. That's what's all in the book. And Wonderful. so that was just the perfect title. Well, it is a perfect title and it really does sound like revelation and inspiration. The fact that, uh, Isaiah's uh, passages just came to you and you looked them up and they were very fitting. I think that's a remarkable story. In your book, yeah. you also mentioned default settings of humanity that we need to overcome. Tell us a little right. bit more about that. Yeah, that's that was kind of a, a lifelong journey. Uh, you know, of course, uh, I was the main reference. You know, I was just dealing with my issues and, and, um, of course, you know, there's lots of teaching out there about the human condition and stuff. But what I what I what the Lord revealed to me uh, really as an, a 55 year old adult was that um, I had been codependent most of my life and codependent, you know, because of having a alcoholic father. Mm -hmm. and, and and one of the typical responses to it of a child who's grown up with an alcoholic parent is codependency mm -hmm. and it's shame based. And, and, and just as I healed and as the Lord revealed things to me, he, and, uh, and also listening to people like Brene Brown, whose life work in recent years is about shame. And, and I discovered that one of the basic driving uh, motivations of every, of most humans is shame based. Mm. And, and it, and it, and it comes in varying levels. You know, I had a, I had a devastating level of it mm. because of the things that I experienced, but most people you think about what, why do you, why did you dress up today? You know, why did I put on my nice shirt? Cause I don't want to 
be shamed for looking like a slob, you know, it, it, it's, it can be real subtle and, and, and in places it can be very helpful, but, but in a lot of cases it can be real detrimental. It's just whatever level of shame that we work out of. And that's, that's one of them. It's just, that's yeah, a if big you have these one. dark feelings one. inside that, right. you know, you're no good, you're worthless. Um, that all kind of, you know, extends to those feelings of shame. And I think particularly growing up in the era where you and I did, parents were really tough on us, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, they insulted us, they hit us, you know, it was <laughs> yeah. just kind of par for the course. I mean, some got it worse than others, but right. the whole idea of, you know, preserving the psyche of a child and, you know, uh, dealing with a child more delicately really don't, I don't think evolved until recent years. So a lot of people, right. particularly from our generation, <clears throat> have these issues to deal with. Not to say that people aren't being abused right now. Unfortunately, that is the case. So let me ask you, how do we deal with the fears and the shame that are cultivated during childhood when we're an adult? Yeah, as, as children, we're so vulnerable to every stimulus, everything that comes at us. We have no filter. And so um, the Lord had me start dealing with mine when I was like 18, 19, 20, uh, whenever my mental f faculties were developed enough to be able to handle going to those abstract feelings. And I think from what I learned and what is a real problem um, in our churches and in just society at all, and as a whole, is that we're not allowed to go there. You know, uh, emotional and mental issues are kind of taboo. And, but luckily, in recent years, it's become more uh, more acceptable to talk about those things. Mm -hmm. But when I grew up, you know, I, I would share about the hard things I was going through. And I would have pastors and people in church, you know, people that are supposed to love me and support me. They told me I, they would either laugh at me or tell me to shut up. You know, mm. quit talking about your stuff. You know, mm. it, it, it's like it. they were afraid it would give God a bad name. You know, me being a Christian and saying I'm having a hard time. <clears throat> but that's a fallacy. You know, Christians suffer. That's part of our maturing process. But but the fact that we're not, mo for most of the, you know, most of the generations, <clears throat> we have been shamed from talking about it yeah but and that's what that's what my book was so one of the things in my book is i want to give people permission to be human mm. i want to give them permission to talk about those things because a lot of that stuff can be resolved just by talking it out yeah exactly and also you know you mentioned the failures of the clergy i mean some of the clergy members unfortunately were abusive as well I mean, yeah. they were part of the problem. They weren't part of the solution. Um, right. And other clergy members knew that <laughs> members of the clergy were being abusive and said nothing. So this whole yeah. idea that human suffering and shame and fear and humiliation should be kept away in the corner is wrong. And so we're right. glad you're shedding some light on it. In your book, you yeah. also promise to reveal truths about God that are rarely heard in churches. Tell us a little bit about that aspect of your book. That's great. That, that's one of the things about my book that I'm most most excited about is, see, I've, I've walked out, I've, I've known the Lord for 50 years. So I've, I've known him from thick and thin and, mm. you know, mountaintops to, to the depths of hell, you know, yeah. and, um, and I've seen his true nature a lot in churches. I've been I've been into denominational churches and I've been in non-denominational, you know, more charismatic churches. Mm -hmm. And I think both both extremes kind of miss the true nature of God. And the true nature of God is basically the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Uh, gentleness and self-control and uh, you know the we it's like um you ever play that game gossip when you're a kid mm -hmm. where you get in a circle of people one person says a statement 
and it goes around whispering they're whispering around from person to person and by the time it gets to the end, by the end of the totally story. lost its <laughs> totally lost its uh, meaning and i think right. that's where we are in the body of christ we have yeah. lost you know before we started out with the true message was people are are fallible and we need god we need jesus and it's come around to now it's like People sit in church and they're not, there's no reverence there. Hmm. You know, we're laying back and we're drinking our lattes. And and in order to, to become a Christian, you just say this real short prayer and it's real trite. It's just very, it's so, it's, you know, for God, when, when we give our hearts to God in heaven, it's like a huge deal. Hmm. There, I mean, there's a celebration going on. It's like a, a royal wedding. But but we've made it so cheap and so easy, and we've missed we've made God out to be a crazy fanatic, you know. Where you know these guys on TV just push people down, and when they're praying, that's not God. He is gentle and he is kind and he is compassionate, and he's the only one that won't leave us in our dark times. Absolutely, he's a forgiving God and uh, a righteous God, as you point out in your book as well. If somebody is going through a hard time right now, um, you know, feeling shame and fear and guilt and hopelessness, some of the scripts that have been written for us by our parents, perhaps, and they'd like to get closer to God and have a better connection, what's your recommendation? Well, um, a lot of times when you're in that condition, you need to talk to somebody with skin on. You know, you need to talk to a person who has gone through that or can help you with your first steps. You know, if you've got a good pastor that you trust or a friend, hopefully, that, that you know, has a relationship with God, go to them and ask them questions. But if <clears throat> but if you know the Lord and you just like I was, um, there wasn't a whole lot of people I could go to because what I was going through was deeper than a lot what a lot of people had experienced. And so what I learned that got God's attention and brought him on the scene quickly is to humble myself, mm -hmm. to humble myself as a child and be real honest. The more honest we pray um, about our condition, because, you know, a lot of people, we think God wants us to say these, these elaborate prayers. And right. He, we, we, we find ourselves trying to impress God with, with our prayers or with our words or whatever. No, he knows the truth. He knows that we really have nothing to offer him except our thanks, you know? And so I've found that when I humble myself and I pray a really honest prayer and I say, Lord, I need your help. I, I, I need you. I, I'm not able to cope with this. He will come onto the scene instantaneously. He wants to help people. He loves people. And so, but most people come to God with kind of a entitled attitude and kind of a adult, you know, prove yourself to me kind of an attitude. And mm. you're not going to get anywhere with God. The Lord, the, the Bible says the, if you don't humble yourself and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. And so that's what I've learned. I, and I, I love it because I've, I've always had a childlike heart and that's why I've been able to humble myself before the Lord and he shows up. He shows up. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I think, and you're kind of talking about this, I think that conversation that you might have with your pastor or a therapist, you can have directly with God. Right. Uh, in prayer, uh, as informal as you'd like it to be, just have it as a conversation. The answers will come. And I think it's very, very empowering and very, very enlightening just like Kobe McGee's book. It is called Treasures of Darkness. It's a compelling book. It's a beacon for those seeking answers to life's deepest questions. Kobe, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. You bet. Thank you, Logan. Pleasure's all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.